So if you've seen these videos before, you know there's five things I've picked out every month. Uh, YouTube channel, book, app or program, podcast or blog article, something like that, and then the thing that I've bought or ended up with somehow. So let's get into it. cannot, in good conscience, go another month without mentioning one of the best new food channels, food photography channels that's come about, and that is The Bite Shot. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you're into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. The Bite Shot, if you don't know it already, and if you found your way here, you may already know it already because Joni from The Bite Shot has been kind enough to mention me once or twice, which is really nice. And she is a master of creating community. She's got a huge sort of Facebook channel which uh, I'm part of and is amazing and like she's brought seems to have like brought together these people who are also very very good at what they do from around the world into this into this community and it's just a great thing and I'm, I'm really sort of happy that it's something I found that I can be a part of if you're interested in food photography at all check it out it's really really great so the book for this month uh, that I'm going to recommend, and I read it last month, but I didn't do a video last month, so what you're going to do is on the shelf here somewhere. It's here. It's The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. It's a really incredible book. It's only a short read. It's, it's the story of... Story of... Do you want to come and help me? Not really. What's his name? Bo. Oh, yeah. It says it on the. It does. Obviously, it says it on the front because he wrote it. He wrote it with his eyes. How did How did he write it, Katie? He wrote it with his eyes. <laughs> he um. He had a he had a stroke and. Was it? It was a stroke, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'd like to get you involved to help me out. Uh, yeah, so he basically ended up uh, with something called locked-in syndrome, which if you're an avid watcher of House, you might know about, but otherwise probably probably not something that, um, that comes up in day-to-day -day conversation. And basically it's kind of like his, it's sort of his memoirs as written whilst lying in a hospital bed with locked in syndrome. And it's incredible, not, uh, it, it would be a very good book regardless, sorry. It would be a very good book reg regardless. But the fact that he managed to to write it, yeah. So he suffered. He suffered a massive stroke. Uh, he was the editor in chief of French L magazine. Uh, father of two young children, found himself completely paralysed and speechless, able to only move one eyelid. Oh, so not his eyes, just one eye. He dictated this book. So someone sort of wrote it down, but he. Um, Basically, by using like yes, no, and like an, an alphabet. What was the alphabet? It's, it's like a rearranged version of the alphabet, as seen here. Um, basically, that being, is it E? Is it S? Is it A? And he'd kind of blink when to stop. I think. I think that's how it worked. S A E I E. He wrote. What is basically his memoirs, and that's why it's quite short. And um, 
also why there's not a sequel. But it's incredible, really, really worth a read. I highly recommend that book. The, the piece of software that I'm gonna recommend, uh, I did a video on a couple of weeks ago, it's iMovie, and sorry if you don't use a Mac, but it's what I use. I first used iMovie probably 2004, so it was the first year of college. I think that people are very intimidated by the thought of video editing, mm -hmm. and if they're introduced to iMovie, I mean literally, you open it up, and it doesn't look that scary, mm -hmm. and you show them how to import some video, and, and they can do it in a matter of a half hour, I believe. Mm -hmm. You could be a video editor. You know, and that's that's not intimidating, that's exciting. I like the effects in iMovie. One of my favorites is Earthquake. It makes it look cool instead of something sketchy that you film from your skateboard <laughs> like that. iMovie's the free video editor that you get with your Mac. And it's been great at times, it's been terrible at times, depending on the version. But the latest version, I've just tried it, I just tried it out sort of a couple of months ago highly recommend it it's a really really fantastic piece of software and it comes free um, you can download it for free if you've got a Mac don't know the details on that but it it's free it was free for me on this one this is not a new Mac so so yeah it should be free for you but check out the other video I'll link it just here if you're interested in in how to edit on iMovie because it's it's useful as you may be able to see just behind me, I've actually decided to edit this video completely on iMovie. And when I say completely, I mean I've had to use Premiere to do some stuff, After Effects to do some stuff, and Photoshop. But in the process of doing that, I've learned some really good little workarounds. So I'm going to go over them in another sort of slightly more advanced version of the other iMovie video that I did. I still recommend it. Usually the reason that I do these videos or I remember to do these videos is because I read a blog or an article that I really think is worth talking about and this video is no exception. This morning I was reading an article. Cheers guys. This morning I was reading an article on a blog called Better Not Stop, which is Manchester-based blogger Hannah Cox, I think. I'll correct that if I'm wrong. And basically it's it's something that, that Hannah's written called How Much Money I Really Have, Make and Need. And it, it's a very, very honest article about how much someone needs to earn as a as an independent uh, business owner and as a, a blogger, and I was really impressed by not only how well it's written and and how much information Hannah gets across, but also how candid she is about something that a lot of us really refuse to talk about. Um, something that that I definitely find uncomfortable to talk about. Probably because I earn so little money and people would wonder how I feed myself. I'm going to obviously, as, as usual, link it below. It's well worth a read if you're sort of... if you, I, I'd recommend it for two kinds of people. If you're someone who's interested in doing this, this, or you are kind of going down that route of, of working for yourself, especially if you're wanting to work in sort of social media, also, I'd really, really recommend it to people who hire people or who use influencers or people who work in social media or who hire freelancers because I'd like you guys to understand what goes into, you know, actually making the work that you pay us for and, and often undervalue. So yeah, check that one out down below. And last but not least, the thing that I bought that I want to talk about, or the actual object that I own that I want to talk about, and that's the lens that I'm shooting this on. I got it a little while ago, already need to clean, <laughs> but it's the Canon EF 16-35 F4, yeah, F4. It's the Im image stabilized version. I got this one because it's lighter, cheaper, 
and has the image stabilizer uh, built in, whereas the the f2.8 is potentially a better lens, but not by much. Uh, there's actually a really good video on it, a uh, comparison video between the one that I got and the the f2.8 version 3. Uh, I'll link that below, that's the art photography, so Ted Forbes, if you don't know him, check him out. Is a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens, and this, well, it's another Canon 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. This lens is $1,000, and this lens is, well, $2,000. But that video is worth a watch if you're considering like a wide angle lens. The reason I got a Canon lens was basically I wanted to see what the fuss was about. Um, it was a little bit cheaper than the Sony one, and I thought I'd just give it a go. I do a lot of manual focus work anyway, so the, the actual focus didn't matter too much for me. A lot of the time I use a tripod and dial it in manually. And um, so yeah, that's why I got this one. I'm really impressed with it so far. As I say, I had it a couple of months now. It's worked beautifully for the interior and architecture stuff that I do. I highly recommend it. Obviously I've not tried it against much else, but it's a really good lens. So there, there's my picks for the month. Um, thanks Katie for, for your help. Nope, she's gone. Um, and uh, yeah, check them out. Check this, the stuff out. Definitely read that. Read the um, read the blog, and if you're interested, as I say, in food photography, check out the bite shot. You won't regret it. It's it's both entertaining and informative in in the sort of perfect measure. And she gets across ideas better than I do. So yeah, so that's that's it from me. Um, See you next time.